Hi, Dave Okenquist back again with Rodney Johnson. We are wrapping up our Economy and Markets TV coverage of the Irrational Economic Summit. It was just a great event, wasn't it, Rodney? And really, uh, starting from day one, which I thought really set the tone, we started off with economic history, we did cycles, we got geopolitics from George Friedman, we did generations with uh, Neil Howe, and of course we started with Harry Dent, and then we got a look ahead from Michael Turpin. I thought that really laid the foundation for everything else that was going to come for the next couple of days. It, it did, and we had a lot of great things. As you said, you know, we kind of got the background. Harry yeah. Dent set the tone with the background and then looking forward with the cycles, uh, and then we had George Friedman talking about geopolitics, which right. of course is very important right now, and it actually informs one of Harry's newest cycles, this geopolitical cycle, and part of the 90-year cycle. Right. And so adding those together was very informative. Yeah. And then, of course, you rolled into Neil Howe, which is uh, really a, a big part of uh, our work here at Dent Research with the demographics and how people change in their points of view over time. Exactly. That was very entertaining and informative. And then you rolled into the Internet of Things. <laughs> yeah. right? And uh, Kevin Ashton was, of course, uh, making fun of something that I had written, although it's I had quoted something else, you know, what did the refrigerator say to the toaster? And it's like, I don't know. And he said he doesn't know either. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I think it set a great tone of not looking at the next 10 minutes, right. but looking at the next 10 years. Yeah. These and are so sort of the big things that are affecting, you know, what's what's happening in the world now. Right. And, you know, and then day two, we moved into things that were more actionable and onto that theme of disruption. We talked about tech. There were some debates about that. You moderated a few panels, <laughs> uh, a number of them. What, what, what did you think from you know, getting, being in the thick of these discussions and uh, what were your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I, I moderated, I think, every panel. <laughs> okay. uh, so I did have that going for me. Um, but it was interesting to be part of it and then ask people, you know, about their views of things uh, like electric cars and, yeah. and kind of how they saw that playing out over time. Uh, and so if you didn't get a chance to watch it, please go back and do that. It was very worthwhile uh, to have uh, people of that stature bringing to bear their expertise on it and then yeah. looking forward um, as, uh, as, you know, what it might be. And then, of course, cryptocurrency was part of that conversation as well. Got a little contentious, I think, uh, on that one. Well, right? <laughs> and, and it's a good argument, right? Yeah. Because it's not just is this is this a new currency that is worthwhile or interesting. Yeah. It's is this something that's going to supplant national currency, which is a great conversation to have Absolutely. if you don't believe your country has been a good steward of the currency. And I don't know very many people that believe their country is doing a really good job right. of managing that. <laughs> Yeah, one of the things that stuck out for me was uh, Lou Bassanese. He had that hype cycle thing. I yep, was just, yep. I, I hadn't seen it really. It made perfect sense the moment I saw it, but I had actually, I hadn't seen that before. So I, that I stuck out to I, me. the hype cycle came, of course, from Gartner. But uh, what I had always been told, you know, growing up on Wall Street like I did, was you buy the rumor, sell the news. And, and it sounds simple, but you have to think through what that means, which is, of course, when people are talking about something in, in pot stocks, I, of course, gave a presentation on right. marijuana and its growing acceptance. But I said, there's nothing to buy right now. And it's because Canada just legalized uh, last week on yeah. October 17. And so people were buying those stocks right up to the point of news, the day of legalization. And then after that, they rolled over and died. And so it is a very classic hype cycle from yeah. Lou Bassanese and sort of follows the logic of buy the rumor. But as soon as it happens, you sell the news. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, of course, we cannot forget Lacey Hunt who explains all of economics in one hour to you. It's just brilliant. And has the voice of God, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, when he talks, it's like, oh my goodness, <laughs> yeah. the voice is coming from above. Absolutely. Uh, I spoke to a network member, I forget his name, just a, a, a bit ago. He brought his son along, who is actually a, uh, he's studying economics in college. Yep, yep. And had an opportunity to talk to Lacey Hunt uh, during our lunch break, which is just you know, this is sort of what this is all about, right? Coming together, right. having that opportunity to talk to someone like Lacey Hunt, you know, have his ear. I thought that was great. Well, it was. And, you know, we added to Lacey Hunt, George Stockman. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, David Stockman. Listen to me. Uh, David Stockman. So with Lacey Hunt and David Stockman and then Harry Dent, you have three very strongly opinionated people who have a lot of research and yeah. background to bring to it. And we did the panel. It was very entertaining and very enlightening. And they didn't agree. And that's what you want, right? Uh, yeah. You don't want people at odds. You want them bringing a different perspective. Uh, uh, certainly David Stockman and Harry Dent think that we're headed toward an event. We're headed toward something that's going to roll over and just create a shock in the system that you have to wash out. Yeah. And Lacey Hunt brought up the possibility that this is an L shape where it might go down and then you have a very long tail of dealing with the slow decline 
in his view, like the British Empire, where they basically just had to let go of assets like their empire around the world to focus on just the British Isles. Yeah, so going peeling it back just a little bit historically what this sort of thing might look like. Yep. Now, those three, yeah, they, they're similar, slightly different, but generally in the same track. And uh, something that came up today was uh, from J.C. Parrott's. He's along the same way. He says he looks at 5,000 charts a week, which I believe. I think he had 5,000 <laughs> well, charts. You talk to him, so you do know that. Shit, you know? But just the way he walked through, uh, you know, you're getting above this, and then it just starts breaking down. And he said he's starting to fear, feel bearish for the first time in a very long time. I thought that was a very convincing way to sort of make that case. It is, and it comes from a different angle. Exactly. And so uh, I guess that's the point here is we brought people – uh, together that can provide a different perspective. Um, there was nobody particularly positive. I mean, there were some people that say, hey, there are some good things going on, but there are a lot of cracks in the veneer right now yeah. that say you should be cautious. And so uh, as, as Richard Smith of TradeStop said, don't be fearful of raising cash. Yeah. Cash can be your friend. And so if you hit your stops, you get out, you step aside, you'll wait for the dust to clear, and you wait for the next opportunity. Absolutely. But even even so, even saying that there are a number of, you know, Richard said the same thing, there are opportunities right now still, even though, you know, you're, oh, yeah. you're, you're going to be Energy is one. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, energy and, is a big know, one. Roger Conrad and Elliot Gu came through and talked about energy, and Charles, of course, and his peak income. And we even own some uh, ConocoPhillips and Tortoise uh, infrastructure energy in our boom and bust portfolio. And so there is a pocket there, uh, and utilities have done well, but by and large, the word of the day is caution. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that pretty much wraps up our coverage here. Do you have any final thoughts, Rodney, on uh, the last three days? Uh, no, it's been a great conference. We've had a lot of uh, great information. People seem to have enjoyed it. And uh, I know they all enjoy their Economy Markets t-shirt with your <laughs> face on it. So. Well, who doesn't want to wear my face on That's your right. body? That's right. I hope everybody at home got a chance <laughs> to see that. So uh, that was a hit of the conference. So we appreciate you and Economy Markets TV. Uh, thank you. I hope you all enjoyed the live stream and uh, being able to bring these guys on to talk to them just for a little bit. So I think that's all we have. So for Rodney Johnson, I'm Dave Oakenquist. Thank you and good night.